Right, now hopefully that should be in uh, in landscape now. Let's have a look. Oh, it's a bit ski whiff though, isn't it? Hang on. Uh, there we go, perfect. Right. See if I can strain it up a little bit though. Using my state of the art um cradle there to hold the, the camera in. Love it. Right, okay. It's not really state of art, it's a it's a rubber band. So welcome back to the second part of the paint along. Thank you for uh the feedback I got yesterday from some guys. Uh, as you can see, uh, I've gone into landscape this time, and that should help. I've also used the cutting mat I was talking about yesterday because I was told that it was quite difficult to get to see what was going on because of the newsprint that I'm resting on. I've started a bit earlier today. Hopefully the sun won't come around and wash everything out. This is the sprue that I painted yesterday on the stream. You can see I've added little red markings there to it so we know so there we go just let the camera auto focus there hopefully uh no it was a bit too close but um yeah so i've got those five guys there i haven't done any more than i did yesterday on the stream i've maybe just touched up a little bit that we missed and things like that but today i want to focus on getting this sprue finished i'm going to do the flesh on all the guys and all the hands I want to do these Shaco covers. I want to do these brass plates here and the brass chin straps. And then I want to get these packs finished and the muskets done as well. So hopefully I'm going to be here till about two o'clock today. Let's try and get that done and we'll see how we go. Uh, I'm, I've got my laptop to the side as well. So I'm going to be reading uh, your chat. So hi, Steve. Nice to see you again. Um, in the garden painting guy, oh, lucky man. I wish I was. Um, so yeah, so let's let's crack on with it. I spoke to my brother yesterday. He watched the stream, and uh, he watches a lot of these things. He's as I said yesterday, he's a much much better painter than me. And one of the things he said is, make sure people don't think you're sponsored by Games Workshop. So I'm not sponsored by Games Workshop. If Games Workshop want to sponsor me and send me loads of free paints and stuff, I'm not going to say no. But uh, as it stands, unfortunately, no, no, I'm not sponsored by them. So what I'm going to go with first is we're going to do the flesh. Now, as I said yesterday, there's two different kinds of undercoats for the contrast paints. You either go with the off-white, the sort of grey white, which is the Corax white, I think it's called. Um, and that's what we did yesterday. Or you can go with a cream, which gives you a bit more of a warmer color so that's what we're going to do for the flesh i've not got the cream it's called wraith bone so i'm going to use screaming skull instead and i'm going to paint all the skin with this and also the shaco covers as well now shaco covers were probably uh the vast majority of them would have been black because they were oil skin which is obviously waterproof but i always find painting black covered shakos is a bit of a waste of time because you may as well just be painting the shaker then. Uh, now, in this case, in this army, I've got more covered shakos than I would normally because I didn't want to have to sculpt the uh, <laughs> didn't want to have to sculpt the shako plates. But um, yeah, so I'm going to do those like an off-white cream color, as if it's a um, almost like a leather or a uh, like a cloth uh, bag that they would put over the top. So it's not historically accurate 100 percent i'm sure they'd end up covering them with whatever they could get their hands on but uh, it'll do for today and as i say it allows a bit of variation in the unit a bit like the trousers it's nice to uh, have something that just looks a little bit different and we can see the uh you know as the unit goes all together it just doesn't look like a mass of black shakos so you see i'm just putting on there i'm being fairly rough with it uh, something else that my brother suggested as well was getting an area that i know would be in camera shot because there was a lot of stuff yesterday that was out of camera shot so apologies for that and that's where again this green cutting mat comes in 
if it's on the mat, I know it's on the camera, which unfortunately includes my pudgy hands, but uh, there you go, can't have everything. So get that painted. Use grey seer for contrast off white. Yeah, absolutely. The um the grey seer is a good base for that. And it is a good base for um if you want to do white, it's quite a nice base coat for that as well. If I was painting Austrians or uh when I go to doing the straps on these, which are gonna be white, I think the uh the Corax white is gonna be quite a nice base for them. So that's the Shaco's done, as you can see. I haven't done the hair on those two guys. I'll have to do that in a bit. So now we'll get on with the hands. One thing I like about acrylics is the drying time. Well, I know a lot of people, particularly historical painters out there, use enamels because that's what you know they used to use growing up or before acrylics were widely available, that's what they would have used. Uh, animals are okay, but I tend to find the drying time for them is a bit too long and you tend to obscure a lot of detail with them. I mean, that said, you know, I've seen some absolutely phenomenally well painted figures using enamels, so it's not a, um, it's not a guarantee that it's going to be too thick, but uh, certainly when I've tried in the past, it's not been, uh, not been as successful as when I've used acrylics, I have to say. That's all those hands done. Unlike yesterday, it's uh, we've not got too much heat in here today, so hopefully the paint won't dry instantly. It'll take a couple of minutes to dry, and it just means that when I go to do the other side of this sprue, hopefully I'll be able to blend it in, and it won't end up a bit lumpy, which it can do if it's too hot. So get there. Yeah, no, Steve, when it comes to um, to painting, my brother is, uh, he's far better than me. I uh, I will take his advice. And he watches a lot of painting YouTube videos. He's, he's self-taught, actually. And he's uh, he is very, very good. His focus is far more on the painting than the gaming. Whereas mine's on, let's just get the figures on the tabletop and get those dice rolling. So it's nice to have a different opinion from someone who is inter more interested in uh, in that kind of thing. So let's get these hands off with the musket done as well. Miss them. Uh, bu 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 apologies if the, uh, the camera keeps trying to autofocus. It seems to uh, autofocus when I don't want it to. Uh, not when I do, so we'll do my best on that one. Did I do the side of those hands? Yeah, I did. One of the things that I don't like about the Perrys, and I'll show you here, is because everything goes across the sprue, you tend to end up... It's not so bad on these, because they're facing out, like this um, this bearskin there is. But the Austrians that they do in particular, the heads face along the sprue, so they're sort of facing that way. Uh, which is nice because it means you get some good detail of the, the sides of the head. So the chin straps and things like that are really nicely detailed. But it means you end up with a mould line right down the middle of the face. And just painting these hands here, there and there, I'm noticing that the mould lines are quite bad. Now you can scrape them off, uh, but you've got to be careful when scraping them that you don't scrape all the fingers off as well. So I tend not to bother, to be honest, which is a little bit lazy. But... Uh, when it comes down to it, you can't really see them. And uh, yeah, we're all about getting the figures on the tabletop rather than painting crystal brush winning masterpieces. Or oh, well, I, I certainly am anyway. So I think that is everything it's going to be fleshy. I think we've boned that. Uh, yes, we have. I'm just noticing here on the back that I didn't do the uh, black contrast on the backs of these uh, these short sabers. So still got my ready ammunition box. Let me up. Give it a shake. 
just looking at the, uh, the thing on the screen. I hope nobody's seasick because the uh, the autofocus is going a bit crazy on there. For the next one, I shall have to try and uh, and see if there's a way I can minimise that autofocus. So that's those two done there, and I also needed to do the hair on those two guys. So we'll get the brown up. Now last night. After uh, after I finished the stream, I did manage to get a little bit more done. Now this sprue here, I'm not going to do anything more on this one. I'm going to leave it. Uh, I'm just only going to paint it on stream so you can see the progress yourself. I'll go on to his uh, Shaco cover there. But uh, I did manage to do some more. I'm just going to use this brown again while I've got it out on one of those. There's Suck up that bit of uh, contrast there. Hopefully, when I put the wash on there, that'll, uh, that'll not be too bad. Oh, I see, I've gone off the camera again, haven't I? I've just noticed that. Uh, right, so the one that I did yesterday, or one of the ones I did yesterday, was this one here, which is the command sprue. Now, you can see on there, because I haven't uh, undercoated the Shaco yet, I left it purposefully un, un, undercoated you can see the starburst that i've made there with the um uh, the green stuff hopefully you can see that on there and you can also see that i've done next to the thing i'm hoping that the camera's going to auto focus on it no it hasn't that's a shame um you can also i may hold it a bit lower hopefully it will you can see that i've done this bearskin brown as well now not all the bearskins were black some of them were brown and for the sapper, I wanted to do his brown. Now, his is very pale. It's the same brown as the backpack. Now, I don't really want it to be. So I've got two things I'm going to try. I'm going to try first doing another layer of the contrast brown. If that doesn't work, then I'm going to pop a black wash over the top. So that's one of the other things with these contrast paints. Is you can do another layer. And you can also put normal washes and things over the top and that's made it a lot darker still perhaps not quite dark enough so i might end up uh, doing a black wash as well so i'll do the back there well i'm here i'll do his hair and uh, he can have some brown hair and where's the officer there he is he can have some brown hair as well Make sure these CDs get done. There we go. I also found with these figures as well, I've just noticed there the green stuff in his neck, uh, that these Perry's, the heads didn't really go on very well. They're not very well set into the um, into the necks. So just be aware of that as well when you're doing them. That's, uh, that's not great. Uh, so Praetorian Dawn, yeah, I do tend to paint on the sprue. It's something that I've done a lot more recently. I tend to find that I can paint a lot quicker doing it that way. And I also find that I can get to things like the chest areas and things like that a lot easier. It's not so much of a problem on these. Maybe the ones that are advancing, if I use those arms, it would have been a bit more difficult. But things like the British, where you traditionally want them firing, or things like light infantry and things like that, it can be quite difficult to get to the chest and paint the details there. I, mean, I guess you could sort of cut them off, stick them on a stick, and then glue the arms on separately after you've painted them. But I just I just find it uh, do it all at the same time. What I'll do when I clip them off is I'll touch up the bits, on say, on the packs where the sprue touches. Uh, on the bodies themselves, I won't need to because they're connected at the arms there. And then on the bottom of the base. So those will be covered with the arms that I glue on. And obviously that will be on the bottom of the base. So that will be fine. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the muskets. Now I tend to do the muskets metal first. And then the wooden stock afterwards. And the reason for that is. Because I'm doing the inner layer. I can paint the wood over the top. And I tend to find I'm less likely to go over the metal. Than I am to go over the wood if I paint that first and then paint the metal afterwards. So I always go metal first, 
but uh, that's just just how I do it and it's just to allow me to be a little bit more slapdash with it and that helps save some time as well try and avoid the hand if possible I was doing a bit more research last night as well on the Vistula Legion. They, uh, when they got to Spain, they were issued with French uniforms. So the uh, the cut of them being not being the uh, the Polish cut is not necessarily too tragic. Uh, there's also a question about chapkas or shakos as well. Uh, I've seen various things on that. Did they wear the traditional Polish chapka or did they wear shakos with like an extra um sort of tuft on the top of the pom-pom uh my guys are going to wear shakos again from my research it would appear really that no one actually knows i've seen people assert 100 percent that they wore shakos and i've also seen them other people say 100 percent they wore the chapkas so it's very much going to be a which do i think is cool and just to make them stand out from all the french regiments that are going to be running around I think uh, the chapkas will make them stand out quite nicely. Now, for the light infantry, I haven't given those chapkas. I've given those shakos with the very long plumes on. Uh, now, that's for dress only, really. And there's, again, some debate about whether they would wear the long plume in battle. But once again, I want them to stand out on the battlefield. So they're getting them on, on my figures. You get enough in the box to do the six... Um, six that you want as your light company and then also for the skirmish figures if you want to do them as well so that's the ultimate goal of these battalions is that each one's going to be 36 figures the army's going to have eight of them when i finally finish they did have uh, a second uh, vistula legion was going to be raised in 1809 but they actually didn't get that many volunteers so they ended up disbanding the second vistula legion and just putting the troops into a fourth regiment and then that became the fourth regiment of the first vistula legion which you don't really call the first vistula legion because there was only one so Uh, when you cut the figure from the sprue does the paint not come off it can do you've got to be very very careful with it uh miguel i tend to use clippers uh these ones here uh so hopefully it won't do but uh well i'll do it on camera when i get around to doing that part so you'll be able to see whether it does or not i think the key is you're gonna have to go back and do a little bit of a touch-up anyway because of where the sprue contacts the part so if a little bit more comes off around there, it's not necessarily the end of the world because you go in knowing you're going to have to do it anyway. But I tend to find the time that you spend touching up is less than the extra time it spends you turning the models over and trying to get into all that obscure detail if I've built the figure already. Obviously, if they're metal, you can't do that because they, they come as they come. It's just one of those things. But I tend to find on metal figures as well, that, that detail is probably not modelled on, so you can get away with uh, with maybe not doing it. But the plastics, they've got much more of that fine detail that uh, that you need to do really. So let's get in here. To get these muskets done this uh my metal as well this is a lead belter i'm using here which is their base metal and uh mine's drying out it's gone quite thick so it's just a question of trying to eke out as much as i can like i say you don't necessarily have to be super um super neat on this part because we're going to paint over the musket stock anyway but uh, i mean don't you know try and avoid it if you if you can don't get it on there 
just for the sake of it but uh, you don't have to worry too much about it not being done I just thought as well when I'm turning the screw around and taking it off camera so apologies for that I can see that I haven't done this hand I haven't done that hand either so I'm gonna have to go back to that with the bone by doing these um, these different colors before you move on so by doing the metal before I've done the flesh on the bone it means that you can see these uh, these little bits that you've missed and then go over them before you start doing the uh, the next layer I know a friend of mine he um, he gets all these parts onto pencils and paints them that way or he drills into like packs and paints them on little metal wire stands which sounds like far far too much effort for me uh, How's the secret project coming along, Constantine? Oh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's coming on very well, thank you. It's, um, uh, what have I done? Oh, I've just glued a load of uh, artillery crews onto the, the uh, my painting stick. So I will be painting those next. Unfortunately, I've got no white spray at the moment. And they're uniform, well, I say uniforms. They're, they're not really in uniforms. They're kind of in their own dress. And that um, that means that there's a lot of white robes and things there so i have a feeling I, th I think i might know who you are constantine but uh yeah you'll be pleased to know that my mighty ottoman turks are uh, are coming along right so i think that's all the metal done let me just quickly go over it yep 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 yep, yep. nice and then other side yep yep, yep 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 right oh no uh, a little bit more on that one on that end one Right, let's get that done there. Antarctic 1, I'm thinking of getting my first miniature soon. I'm going to get French soldiers. What type would you recommend? It depends what you're after, really. Um, if you're wanting to get started and sort of jump in, then I'd recommend the Waterloo uh, starter set from the Perrys, or maybe like the French infantry starter set. There's a Peninsula War 1 and a Waterloo 1. They're very good value. If you're just after a single box of figures, then I would probably go with the original Perry's box because they're a bit simpler to, to build. You only have to glue the packs on and they're done. And secondly, you've got a nice mixture of guys in great coats who are quite quick to paint. Whereas the, the Warlord ones are all in great coats unless you get the, the other early ones. Uh, so you've got half of them in great coats, which makes them nice and simple to paint. And then you've got half of them in their regular dress, which gives you that experience of painting the Napoleonic figures. Mm -hmm. I would recommend those ones over these boxes I'm painting here because they're not quite as complicated. And to be honest, the poses are really nice. And I think there's I, I don't think these are so much nicer that I would recommend them over the original Perry box. The other thing about the Perry box as well is you get 36 in there, including uh, six voltages, six grenadiers, and six skirmishes. So you actually get 42 figures. Uh, and that means that you've got a battalion in a box there. You don't have to worry about, oh, well, I'll take four figures from this other box and eight from this box. And uh, you, know, you don't need to worry about any of that. You've got, that's a full battalion in that box. If you paint everyone, then you know you've got one unit fully completed. So my recommendation for French would be the 18, 12 to 15 Perry's box. And that's got all the, um, on the picture on the cover is a, um, a voltageur like biting the cartridge and they're sort of on a hill behind him. I've just gone with this brown and I've done it just to, um, just to see what it looks like there. I'm not going to do the rest of them yet because I'm going to wash the metal first. I just wanted to get an idea of what it's going to look like when finished. That's not too bad. I'll quickly do the other side. Uh, ooh, try and get a point again in between his fingers. All faithful, my brush here. Served me for many, many a month. 
but uh, getting a point on there is very much not its speciality, I have to say. Not anymore, anyway. And then we'll do another lock there. Make sure the top's done. Right, now this is the bit where I was saying it's easy to paint the metal first because you've got the top of the wooden furniture and it's easier just to get that on there. Let me move it a bit further onto the camera. I'm really sorry about this, guys. I'm not used to painting on camera. So um, if stuff I end up doing it off camera, I do apologise. As soon as I remember, I try to move it back on. But uh, yeah, so that's that musket there. That's looking quite nicely done. I'm pretty happy with that. So the metal, I think, is good to go. But next, I'm going to do that flesh. So I need to get the bone and do those two, uh, two hands that I didn't do before. I'm also, if I thought about this, I would have put my paints on the other side of the, uh, the cutting mat. So I'm not constantly leaning across the camera. Uh, bum, bum, bum. So where was it? It was these hands that were holding the, uh, the musket, wasn't it? So there we go. This one here. Now again, this is not necessarily the end of the world if I haven't done it. If I, it turns out that I'm missing for I say, this hand here, I haven't done it on a row of figures. It's not the end of the world because I can either just not use these arms, just use the marching ones off this sprue, or I'm going to put the flesh um, contrast paint over them anyway. So that one will just look a bit pale. You'll look a bit anemic. But uh, it's not necessarily the end of the world because we're looking, we're going for the mass look here, not the individual one. So this is what I'm going to do with the flesh. This is Gulliman flesh. Um, and it's... It, I'm not 100% sold on it yet. But uh, I'm going to see what's going on. The reason that the camera is shaking is because I'm just giving it a good shake. With the contrast paints, it's really important that you shake them up because they separate very quickly. So with this one, I'm going to go, I'm going to throw the sprue on the table and then I'm going to go out of the pot because I want to get a fair amount on there and then do it over the face. I'm going to do it over the scales as well because I'm going to go back over those with brass. So I'm not too concerned about that. Oh. Got on his neck there now because this is quite pale it doesn't hugely matter if i get it on the uh the yellow but i'm going to try not to it goes on and it's a very sort of sepia -y chestnut color i don't think it looks great when it first goes on but when it dries it does get quite a bit better so put these over there get that one there Bit more, you'll, you can see that I'm going back and putting a little bit more on occasionally. The more you put on, the stronger the contrast is going to be. Like we saw with that sapper's bearskin, if you put the second layer on, it tends to deepen the original colour. Now I'm concerned I don't want to do the faces too deep. Well, that said, the Vistula Legion, they fought in Spain, so they'd have been quite suntanned. And before they fought in Spain... They fought in Jamaica, so that's probably even... Well, not Jamaica, but in the West Indies. So they should be quite nicely tanned, to be fair. Um, yeah, they were sent to the West Indies to... Well, it certainly wasn't Jamaica. I think Haiti, maybe? Um, and obviously, one of the big problems out there was disease. Malaria would uh, absolutely decimate troops that were sent out to the West Indies. Uh, which is probably why they sent the Vistula Legion... In a sort of, you know, well, we don't want to send actual French troops. So we'll send our auxiliaries and they'll uh, they'll get the job done out there. A bit like they do with the Foreign Legion today. It's, uh, it's one thing to lose Foreign Legion troops. It's quite another one to lose actual Frenchmen. Um, you know, as far as public perception is concerned, anyway. So we'll get these on there. Certainly the British were, were, uh, was no strangers to... Uh, Using colonial troops in less savoury, uh, less savoury battlefields. Dum, dum, dum. So we'll get this done there as well. So I think that's pretty much all of this side. Let's not forget that hand there. So all the faces, hand, 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 hand. Yep. Yeah. Done all those, so I'll flip it over. Let's do the other side. Now again, like I said, with the uh, when I was doing the blue, if it's going to dry quickly, 
you're better off doing the whole of that leg or arm or body or whatever so you don't get that tide mark um with because it's a bit cooler today i can uh, i can just do the whole of one side and then do the other so a brush and quilt now these aren't a uh, warlord these are the new uh peri ones the mid-war peri figures you get like separate ones with line and uh, elite company ones so this is a sprue of the line guys which you get six of in the the regular box and two of if you get the, the elite company box uh, um smash these on there these on there see i didn't do the uh the bone on that hand that was on purpose to show you that it doesn't make that much difference honest not because i uh, not because i missed it or anything uh, there's the bone there cool so i think we've done all of that side can't see any that i've not done cool right yeah they're good brush and quill i was a, a little bit disappointed with them if i'm honest um I don't like the fact that on a normal sprue of guys, you've got two elite company guys. I thought, well, that kind of defeats the point of having an elite company sprue. That said, the elite company sprues are a lot more animated than these ones, so they'll be perfect for skirmishing, voltageurs, and things like that. So I don't know, maybe I'm complaining a bit too much. But it's certainly not what I expected. So you can see the flesh is beginning to dry now. And I'm going to try and get them a bit closer, but not too close that the camera can't focus in. Sorry, I'm just checking my uh, my feed here to uh, to see if the camera's going to focus on it. Um, let me see. Hang on. Does this work? No, it's not really focusing on them brilliantly. I might take some stills and put them up at the uh, you know in another video or something like that. But that's. That sprue pretty much base coated, completely base coated now. I still need to do the rest of the muskets. And I'll need to do the uh, Elite Company epaulets. Um, but that we're, we're, we're getting on quite nicely with that one now. I'm going to go and check on the progress of the Command Sprue and the Sapper. So I'm going to pop this to one side. I'm going to pop that one there. So you can see it's gone a lot darker now. It's gone a lot... I tell you, it looks almost like uh, like an oak, which is not really the uh, effect I was going for. But if you're wanting oak, two layers of Gorgon to fur seems to be the way to go. So I'm not super happy with that one, but I think a black wash will take that um, brownness away and then we'll get a, um, a nice dark, dark brown bear skin. Last night I also managed to get some... Um, uh, some poles done with the white trousers. I said I was going to do some of them in white, and I did them off stream because I thought they'd take quite a bit longer than they did. And I also said I was going to try and get some with uh, brown trousers. Uh, so I've got a voltageur here. You see, he's got the uh, the large plume on there I was talking about earlier on, and he's got the brown trousers. And that was just painted with like a mid brown and a brown wash over the top. So that was nice and quick to do them. Not as uh, not as quick as the contrast blue. But uh, they were still nice and quick, and they'll provide a bit of variation when the unit's finished. I've actually got a, a full sprue of them with those trousers as well. So coming back to this one, I'm still letting the flesh dry here. So I think what I'm going to go and do now is I'm going to do the white on these straps here. I painted over them yesterday with the um, with the contrast and said, oh, it'll be fine, we'll have to go back over them anyway. So now is that point. So let's go over them. I'm just looking at the waistcoats as well. I think they're probably going to need a very quick highlight. Now you'll see um, with these, because it's like a straight line, you can get them done super quickly. Now I could do them now if I'd really thought about it. I probably would have should have painted the great coat first and then gone back and done these because I'm also either going to have to avoid the straps when I paint the great coats or I'm going to paint over them and then have to go back and uh, and do what I'm doing here. As it is, I'm not highlighting the straps, so I'll probably end up just painting over them and then going back to uh, touch them with the white. Again, if you want a bit of variation in your troops, 
great coats are another great place to do it. Uh, see what I did there? Uh, the reason being that, again, as with the trousers, they would wear out reasonably quickly. Uh, so you would end up getting either a patched great coat, which I've seen people do that, and it looks it can look quite nice, or you'd end up just getting an entirely new coat. So with my great coated figures, particularly the warlord ones, I've got a variation of great coat colours there as well. I tend to mix them between the, the standard grey or some um, blue ones, particularly for grenadiers. I tend to give them blue ones. I don't really know why. I don't think there's any evidence that they are particularly blue great coats. But uh, I associate them with grenadiers probably because of the Imperial Guard, to be honest. Uh, there we go. So I'm just sort of doing the cen center of the waistcoat. I'm trying to leave a bit of the grey sear in the in the gaps there. I've got like pockets in their waistcoat, so that's quite a nice raised area that takes a uh, takes a highlight quite nicely. And then down the bottom, see my brush is going ballistic there. So I'll get that painted. Uh, get that washed out rather. Then I'm going to quickly run over the straps. Now, I do have my detail brush in case. It's on standby. I'm hoping I can just use this standard brush. And uh, I won't need to deploy the detail one, but let's see. That's where his shoulder straps for his backpack are. So how about you guys? You guys up to, uh, up to anything painting today? You enjoying your uh, bank holiday weekend? I know I certainly am. It's, uh, it was nice to have yesterday feel like a Saturday and then think, oh, yeah, no, tomorrow's not Sunday. It's brilliant. It's like, like a free Saturday. It's great. Uh, if you do the great coat grey, you can use highlight as a base for the straps. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm not 100% concerned about the great coat straps. Um, I tend to wash the uh, the great coat as well, so that adds a little bit more definition to the straps. There we go. Again, I'm just trying to avoid the yellow. It's not not necessarily a disaster if I get this on the yellow because it's white. I'll be able to paint over it anyway. I am planning on doing a yellow highlight. Because uh, this yellow is quite nice, and it's probably uh, a realistic yellow. The yellows that they had wouldn't exactly be sort of bright neon or anything. Uh, but because they're miniatures on the tabletop, and you're going to be looking at them from four feet away or two feet away, uh, they need to pop. They need to have just a little brighter colour. So I'm going to be using this one here, Sunburst Yellow, which is a very old Games Workshop paint, and it's a little... A little too bright, to be honest. But I'm going to use that one anyway. And hopefully that's going to uh, to just make the figures pop a little bit more than they would without it. These are, by absolutely no means, going to be the best figures you ever see on the tabletop. Of that, I've got no doubt. But the um, just by having those little details that really jump off the table can really make your army look a lot better, a lot better painted than it actually is. And uh, that's that's where I'm at. I'm at having the best looking figures on the table I can without sacrificing the time needed to get all those figures ready. Painting uh, Russian Jaegers. Oh, fantastic. Uh, my palette keeps drying out in the garden. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's just Steve, yeah. That's, uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm not outside. Uh... Oh, Lewis, are you doing your... Um... Uh, are you doing, um, oh, don't tell me, uh, Hebro, uh, Scottish, weren't you? Dark Age Scottish. Uh, I can't remember the, the, the posh word for it. I think you were doing Dark Age Scottish yesterday. Uh, Ralph, you're painting US Cavalry. That's cool. What, uh, what period US Cavalry? Is that, um, American Civil War or is it later? Is it like modern US Cavalry? I've got some, uh, I'm just looking over, I've got some Humvees that I'm supposed to be painting up. Is US Cavalry at some point. Uh, right, so I've done the flesh. I've done the um, 
Uh, what have I just done? I've just done the straps and things. So that's cool. So I'm now going to go back to the muskets. It looks like the flesh wash is mostly dry. So Dark Age Scots, that's the one. Yeah. And Planes War in 15 mil. Oh, that's cool. I was looking at doing Planes War in 28 mil, actually. But uh, I've not seen anyone that makes... Uh, well, I don't know what the word is. Indians, uh, Native Americans. Um, I'm not seeing anyone that makes them sort of for mass mass battles. I've seen skirmish ones, but uh, not those ones. I've just thought it's just coming to my head. That's why I had a bit of a uh, a brain fart there. I'm not supposed to be doing the wood yet, am I? I'm supposed to be washing the metal first. So never mind. Let's finish off doing this one, and then I'll go back and wash the metal. Let's get that stock done there between his fingers. There we go. Bang out there. Make sure you do the top. This is one of the big problems with painting on the sprue. It's something that I do far more than I still should. Is you forget to paint the top of stuff. You paint both sides and then you forget to paint the top. So that can be a bit of an issue. That is one thing to keep my eye out for when painting on the sprue. I've just noticed I've got a gap between this guy's ear and his hair. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of black contrast on there. Oh, no. Yeah, I am. I thought, <laughs> I thought I'd use the blue then. Right. So now I know a lot of painters don't like Games Workshop paints. And I think fair enough. You know, I can understand that there's other ones that people like Vallejo or, as I said, um, uh, is it PP, I think? Uh, but I don't know anyone that does not love themselves a bit of Nuln Oil. Nuln Oil and Agrax Earthshade are the two washes that I think should be in anyone's painting kit. That's brown, that's black. So this is absolutely phenomenal on metal. You're not really going to see it on here um, because they're a bit small. But uh, trust me, if you're painting large metal areas, armour and things like that, then uh, this Nuln Oil is an absolute godsend. I'm just looking over my uh, my Italian Wars guys here. This armour is painted just flat plate me metal with a wash over the top. Still needs highlighting, still needs finishing, but uh, that's where we're at at the stage there. This is absolute gold. I absolutely love this stuff. So let's get it ready to go. So let's do this musket here. Do this one here. When I start in the middle of the sprue, I'm definitely going to uh, forget something. So this is why I'm doing it before I do the brown, or I should be doing it before I do the brown. Uh, you can, by pulling it down across the musket, you make sure it gets in that gap of where the barrel meets the furniture of the musket. And it just really helps bring out that, that straight line of detail. Uh, and that's uh, the straight line I tend to find that's, it's a very pleasing aesthetic to have because it's, you know, when it is, because it's um, CAD, so that you know that's absolutely straight. And I just find tend to find that's a really, really nice look to go for. I don't know, maybe it's just me, a bit weird. Ah, Richie, you've topped up the fridge with Heineken, very good. I tend to find that the more beer I have, the better I think my painting is whilst I'm having the beer. <laughs> so uh, I've got coffee up here, but uh, I did buy, I did find a cheeky bottle of wine up at the supermarket earlier on, which uh, I've not seen in a long time. So uh, it was a bit more expensive than I normally go for, but I shall be enjoying that tonight, I think. So going on there, got this musket here I haven't done. And that's the key, really. It's about sort of, you know, taking your time to go over things. Normally, I'd, I'd be sort of be concentrating quite a bit more on just making sure I'm getting the figures painted. I go into sort of a bit of a get in the zone, but uh, that's fine. Now here, I've gone over the metal with the brown, so that's going to have to be touched up in a beat. Raising up for, say that, Constantinople. Yeah. 
yeah, no brush and quilt. The prices are a lot. I'm uh, I'm certainly not going to uh, not going to disagree with you there, buddy. They are not cheap. And certainly for the quality, they're not. I mean, if they were the absolute best on the market and they were as expensive as they are, then fair enough. But uh, I don't think I don't think they're so much better than their competitors that they can charge twice as much. For me, the thing is with them is it's the consistency of colour which was rather made a mockery of when they changed all of their paints a few years ago. Uh, and the ease of availability, because we've got, there's a Games Workshop in the city that I live in, and there's also uh, two independent stockists. So they're actually very easy to get hold of. In normal uh, normal times, if I need, you know, run out of, uh, I don't know, uh, metal, you know, if I run out of lead belcher, I can just quickly nip into town and uh, I can get them without an issue. Normally, obviously at the moment, not possible. So I'll just go back over the bits that I went over there with the brown. Now you can chase your tail forever on this one where you're going between the metal and the brown. But I think I'm going to leave it pretty much at that. I'm just going to try and get that straight line. That I was waxing lyrical about earlier on. And then I'm going to leave it at that. There we are. Right. So that's all the muskets washed. That's uh, the faces almost done. I think I'm going to do a little bit more on uh, this guy here as soon as I find it. And it's a little bit red for me. I'm not a huge fan of the sort of the red base of the skin i know that's um it's quite an old school way of doing skin i've got a pro painted uh seven years war army that's very much done in that that way and it's uh it was very nice for the time the sort of mid 90s but uh it's probably not the style i'd go for today so that's that one that's looking good happy with those faces it's not you know they could be better, but happy with them for one or two layers, quick layers of the um, the contrast paint. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash these two shakos brown. And then I'm probably going to go over and do the muskets. Now, if I really wanted to save time, I wouldn't do these brown yet. I'd paint the, um, the brass here, the brass chin screen scales and then i do brown on the scales and the shaco covers but i want to show you what it looks like with just the uh just the bone and then the brown wash over the top i think it works really nicely as a shaco cover and it just means they're a little bit different from the black ones that you'll see the rest of the battalion wearing so I'll just bang it on there and it brings out the detail that the perries have sculpted on quite nicely because these are they're not just flat um like cylinders on top of their head they do actually have uh, some creases and things like that modeled onto them so they're quite nice so uh, there we go just make sure that's on there other side and then avoid the uh, painters sprue painters curse of not doing the top so there we go Put a little bit extra on the tie there just to bring that out. There we go, job's good. Now it's a bit thick here where the buttons are, they're doing it up, so I'll just suck a little bit of that off. Right, so that's that done, lovely. So now let's go to the muskets. Now I'm thinking I'm going to do these muskets. I'm probably going to uh, highlight the yellow. Uh, I'm going to do these guys as marching. So I'm going to highlight the marching arms and their chests. Then I'm probably going to cut them off the sprue, touch up the bits that need touching up. Well, glue them together first, touch up the bits that need touching up, and then we'll might knock it on the head for today. That's probably going to take me 
best part of an hour. We'll see how it goes. I might even get them on a base. So we'll see how we're doing for time. But the plan now is, I didn't really come into it with a plan because I didn't know how long it was going to take. The plan now is to get these five figures built and based by the end of this stream. So let's see how we do. Although, to be honest, actually, thinking about it, I might not be able to uh, to do that because two of the backs of the coats here have got the uh, savers. So they're for the elite companies. So I'm going to need... I haven't done any of these guys as elite companies. So I'm going to need to find another one that I've done. I, I, I may have done one off stream last night that I can use. I'm not 100% sure yet. Um, dum, 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 dum. This is what I mean about the um, the sort of frustration of them putting two, two elite company guys on your normal normal sprue. It just it messes up all the maths. Um, I found that very frustrating. I guess if I built them first, then um, I wouldn't have this problem now. Uh, but uh, but there you go. It's just one of those things, I suppose. Now that one there, I haven't done the metal or the washing on, have I? So I'm going to have to uh, go back on that one. It's terrible. I don't know what I was thinking there. Um... Just straighten that out a little bit. So one, two, three regular arms there. So I can certainly get three regular guys done. So we'll get those done by today. Um, because I've got the three regular coattails as well. So that should be quite nice. Jakob Puchalski. Hello, I have a historical question rather than a painting. Well, that's good because I'm better at history than I am painting, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm not very good at history. Uh, one regarding the official legion. In many depictions circa 1810, they are shown as an 1812 regulation uniform rather than 1806. Any idea how that works? Well, I think it might be that it was a slightly different one to the 1812, Jakob. I'm not 100% sure of the pictures you're talking about. But they did have a different style of coat to the regular French, uh, certainly the early regular French, with a cut that was straight across the bottom. It's actually called a Polish cut. They also had uh, pointed cuffs as well. Um, so it might be. It's not quite the same as the 1812 uniform, but it looks more similar to that than it does the, uh, the early one. I said it a bit earlier on in this video as well that I've also heard that in Spain they were issued with French uniforms as well. So I've seen people argue that they had uh, Shakos but still had the Polish cut tops. Uh, and I'm like, well, surely if they got the Shakos issued to them in Spain, they would have had the jackets issued as well. So I think it's a bit of a uh, just do do what you want, basically. The Vichy Legion. I think anyone that says they definitely 100% know what the uniforms were are probably a little bit more sure than they should be of what the uniform was there. It seems to be that there was some attempt to try and yeah, get them the same as everyone else, but I'm not 100% sure how that really works in practice. And you know, from what I know of military units. Uh, they certainly in the British Army anyway, they will be quite keen to keep hold of the things that differentiate them between other units. 
So I don't know. I don't know with the polls. It's um, it's a funny one. I went. I came into this being a bit like, well, I'm just going to have to swallow the fact that it's not particularly historically accurate. You the uniforms. But as I've sort of read more into it, I think that's a, a bit more of a grey area. And I can't really say that they're hugely historically accurate or inaccurate, because I'm not sure anyone really knows, if I'm honest. Such a shameful water tub. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, this this has um this has served me with great gusto for many, many a year. So you haven't seen my brushes yet, mate. They're they're in even a worse state. But I can I can guarantee that I'm not being sponsored by any water tub producers. I think uh, we can all agree on that one. That there's absolutely no sponsorship going on there. The Vichy Legion on Napoleonic Swiss. I, th I to be honest with you, mate, that's a uh, I, that's a, a a tough question to answer. That one. Uh, I've already got some Swiss, which is why I've. Uh, I've not painted them here, but I'm a huge fan of the Swiss as well. Uh, the look of the uniforms is super cool. So I paint them because I was sick and tired of painting blue Frenchmen. I wanted to paint something a little bit different. Um, but the the thing I really like about the Swiss and the Vichy Legion uh, is that they've both got a very limited number of units. There's only four regiments in each of those formations. Uh, I think the Swiss might have had three battalions per regiment, whereas the Vichy Legion only had two. So you've got a very limited number of units that you can do there. And it means that you can you can actually set that as an achievable goal to collect both battalions of the Vichy Legion or all three battalions of the Swiss. Now, I've gone over the metal of that musket quite seriously there, so let's... Uh, Let's go back on that one. There was a bayonet that I missed earlier on as well, wasn't there? Uh, dun, 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 dun. Where was that? Uh, yeah, there it is. Get that one done nicely. I also have a historical question about hats. What year did the British get the Shakos? I believe that until 1812 they wore the stovepipe, but I'm not sure. Well, Miguel, it's my understanding, and I, I'm more than happy for someone in the chat to tell me I'm wrong about this, that they wore the stovepipe through the entire Napoleonic Wars until the Battle of Waterloo, where they wore the Belgic Shako, or, you know, I say the Battle of Waterloo, the Hundred Days campaign, I should say where they wore the Belgic Shaco. Now, that's the one with the false front on it and the big Shaco plate. Now, I could be wrong. I'm absolutely 100% certain there are people in the chat that will know. But if you're wanting British in the Peninsula, it should be the stovepipe. And if you want them at the 100 Days campaign, it should be the other one. And there was one regiment, and I can't remember which one. It was the 40-something, I think. Uh, wore their stovepipe shakos at Waterloo. Uh, again, I'm certain there'll be someone in the chat that knows uh, knows who it is. Uh, the Battle of Vimero, a Swiss regiment was used by a French to attack a ridge. And the 42nd... <laughs> they were shot by a French fire. Yeah, no, that's... Um... That doesn't surprise me. That happened at Fuentes Donoro as well. The uh, uh, the Swiss were sent to storm the village, and the colonel asked Marshal Massena for um, permission for his men to wear their greatcoats so they wouldn't be mistaken for British. And I don't know why, but he said no. He denied the request. So they went into the village in their red uniforms. And yet the French uh, shot them again and the British didn't shoot them until the Swiss did start shooting at the British and then they uh, they fired back. So, yeah, no, that's a definitely a um, a thing for the Swiss. Um, and I think it just goes to show really how... I mean, a French uniform is very different to a British one. Uh, you've got a different jacket, a different shako, things like that. But I think it just goes to show either... 
that that's not actually that important when you're on the battlefield because there's so much smoke and noise and stuff going on anyway. You just look for instant recognition of those guys in red or blue. I also think it shows that there was probably a lot of people who were not in their regulation uniform. Like I say, they'd either be in like the brown, their trousers cut from local brown cloth or jackets would be so heavily uh, bleached and the dye would have run out of them so much that they'd have probably faded to like an almost brown anyway. Certainly for the, uh, the Swiss and the British and the French. Pr uh, I hear that there's goes, uh, I've heard that it goes white. I've also heard it goes black when it runs. So I'm not sure about them. I guess it depends on what kind of indigo dye they use to uh, to dye them. Because I know they, uh, they had to buy the indigo off the British, which is rather... Uh, Rather ironic, I think. That's one of the reasons Napoleon brought in that white uniform in, was it 1808? I think he brought it in. Um, there, there's a suggestion that having seen the blood at the Battle of Elau, uh, Napoleon cancelled it. But uh, there's another suggestion that it had too much royal connotations back to the, the white of the Seven Years' War. And that's the... Um, uh, that's why they ended that. I believe it was the 28th regiment that wore the soap pipe on Waterloo because of the campaign in Egypt. Could be, could be. I know there was one regiment that wears the Sphinx caps ba cap badge, and they have a smaller one on the back of their berets uh, because they fought back to back in Egypt. I'm not sure if that's from the Napoleonic period or a bit later against the Mahdi. I'm not, uh, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure, but um. Yeah, no, I know there's certainly uh, quite a few battle honours coming out of that. And that's where the secret army project, the Ottomans, I'm hoping that I can either ally them in with the British or the French, uh, or I can have enough just to uh, to have their own complete army. So I missed a little bit of musket there. I've missed a whole musket there as well. Uh, dive onto that bit there. Uh, and this musket here, I haven't even done the uh, the stock at all. Uh, so you can see, it's, well, you might be able to see, it's gone very thin there. It's far too watery, the paint. So I'm going to, let me see if I can zoom in. Now. Um, bum, 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 bum. So let's suck some of that water up. I'm going to try and mix with, mess about with the settings later see if i can find a way to zoom in because i can see there's a lot of empty space hit on the uh, thing hang on, let me see um let me see hang on let me move it back a little bit this way we're a little bit closer in now let's try that one um, dum, 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 dum. May I ask where I get all this information from? Uh, to be honest, Steve, it's just it's mostly reading, reading various books or. Uh, one of the huge things that I really like at the moment is the is the Epic History Channel on uh, Facebook, uh, not Facebook, on YouTube. They've just done a series on the Napoleonic Wars, and it's absolutely phenomenal. It's so good. The production values are top notch, and the maps and things that they show of the battles. Certainly after eighteen twelve, my knowledge of the battles gets a little bit hazy. But they're absolutely phenomenal for that. They're really good. But uh, yeah, just just general books. Sometimes more specific ones. Um, the Osprey campaign series are uh, are very good. They've got uh, ones on pretty much all the battles. They don't do one on Elo, uh, which I think is a bit of a shit, bit of a glaring omission at the moment. But uh, I think they do one on Friedland. So. Um, I wonder if he allows in there. Anyway, uh, yeah, the Osprey books I can highly recommend. Um, there's quite a few general histories out there as well. 
And there's one called uh, The War of Wars. That was quite a good one. Um, but yeah, no, it's just general, just reading, things like that. Richie says, the Sphinx Barrage was subscribed Egypt, uh, 1801. So yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah, that makes sense to me then. So yes, they must have fought back to back against the Ottomans, I'd imagine. Uh, I know the British were Ottoman allies for a while. But obviously the, uh, the Marmalukes didn't take too kindly to uh, being pushed around by the British. So I'm just going back in and I'm just uh, touching up any bits I've missed here. I'm trying not to get it on the white straps of the uh, the musket if I can avoid it. Right, cool. So I think that's the muskets done. Certainly they're done to the standard they need to be done right now. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the yellow. This shouldn't take too long. The cuffs I'm going to do as well. And then we'll see where we go from there. Now, as I said, I'm going to use a very vibrant yellow. Far more vibrant than would be historically accurate. Um, but because these are minis, we want them to really pop off the tabletop. I'm using a bit of sprue to hold the uh, the paint open. I always try and get paint out of the lid if I can, rather than out of the pot. That's for two reasons. One, it's a bit more... It's easier to see. You don't have to sort of look down into the pot where you're going. And two, it tends to be, as I said yesterday, it tends to be a little bit thicker than the uh, the paint down there. So that's the... The upgraded yellow that's a little bit bright now i might end up banging a quick wash just to tone the yellow down but i probably won't so uh, yeah that's right well the uh, the rear rank about faced and they uh they fought the cavalry that were behind them i can only assume it was marmalute cavalry um because i don't think there was much french cavalry around by 1802 after Napoleon uh, <coughs> ran away <laughs> uh, back to France, uh, I think he left his general in charge there. He was assassinated quite shortly afterwards. And then um, then the British took over. It's actually, the Egyptian campaign actually won, I don't know a massive, massive amount about, but it's something that I really, really am interested in. I, um, at university, I studied Egyptology. So ancient Egypt is absolutely my jam. And uh, the discoveries, uh, the Rosetta Stone, you know, was obviously a huge discovery allowed us to translate hieroglyphics. That was discovered by the savants, the scientists that Napoleon took with him to Egypt. And we've got some great paintings and things like that. So no, it's a period and it's an area of the world that I think is really interesting. It's one of the reasons I wanted to get the Ottoman army was to expand my understanding of that that area. Uh, and the Marmalukes, yeah, they would fight on horseback, seeing uh, being dismounted as being a bit of a... Uh, uh, being a bit of a, a mark of shame, almost. Uh, it was a, a something that the fella, the fellaheen, would do. And no noble, uh, a noble Egyptian would fight on foot, that was for sure. <laughs> yes no very good sam uh i am painting models i can't be too mean to sam sam mcquillan is my first ever subscriber so uh i can't be too mean to him but yes no i am painting figures i hope you are as well i hope your lizard men are, uh, are coming along so that's him done there looking pretty sweet let's get the underneath of his facings done there very nice so i apologize if i'm rabbiting on a little less than normal here but uh i'm just these are quite small areas i'm just trying to make sure I get them where I need to. I should probably be using a more detailed brush than the one I'm using. But uh, there we go.
Let's get this collar done. There's a there's a nice guide in the um, in the Perry's box actually for a lot of the different regiments you can paint out of this period. The Swiss and the white uniform we were talking about earlier on they are uh, they're both in there as well as uh, as well as some other ones as well. Uh, the Irish uh, regiment was one I was thinking of painting quite recently actually. I ended up painting. I bought. I basically I got on eBay a. Uh, <coughs> regiment of foundry french and i thought well, they're too nice to just be thrown into the line as regular guys they're also very small as well they're they're sort of true 25 mil scale so they're quite short compared to the more modern figures so i thought well i'll try them as either you know irish or italian and the contrast white paint had just come out so i thought well, for the first time i can do some uh white coat guys without wanting to uh pull my own eyes out so uh, i had a go at doing the irish i'm quite pleased with them actually they need basing um but hopefully they'll be on in a video when the quarantine is over and we can all go out and play toy soldiers again uh samuel edge highlighting uh yeah no, that is a bit of a uh, bit of a nightmare especially when you've got a lot of it to do So we're getting there with the the fronts of the coats. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think I've done about as much as I can do with Old Faithful at the moment. So I'm going to switch to an actual proper detail brush. Well, I say detail brush. A brush that's still got a point on it. So... Still add just a dab of water. Let me just get in there and get these collars done. I've got the base coat down there already, so it's just a question really of painting probably three quarters of the collar from the base up. So try and leave that bottom quarter the dark yellow if I can. If not, I mean, if if I go over that or a little bit less, it's not, again, not necessarily the end of the world. I don't think it's really going to be that noticeable. But what it does do is it frames the head quite nicely. You're, the faces of a figure are a place that you're naturally, your eye is naturally drawn towards. So by having these yellow collars, I think it's going to quite nicely frame them. And make them separate from the white that forms most of the body. That's then done there. I'll turn them over and do the back. So we're getting there on these guys. I'm doing all five of them, even though. I'm only going to uh, proceed with three at the moment because of the two backpacks that I can't use for these figures. Uh, and also the arms as well, actually. It's going to be another issue. So what I'm going to do is... Let's get this done. So I'm seeing bits on the figures here that I've missed. So there's a bit of white here that I haven't done. There's a bit of brown on the musket on the end there that I haven't done. Now, I'm not too concerned because I'm going to have to go back and touch up everything anyway. So it's just sort of keep it in the back of my mind that these things need doing. They can also be done while I've, after I've built the model, so I'm not hugely concerned about that either. It's something that I can get that model down, get it on the tabletop, and then come back to it at a later date if I need to, or if I've got time now, I can quickly just 
uh, bust it out and then uh, I don't need to worry about it again. There are some figures, particularly my British though, that I look back on, I'm like, oh, that, that needs to, every time I get them out, I'm like, right, I need to remember to do that before I put them away. And I never do, I always forget. So we've got regular arm, regular arm, regular arm, right. quickly get these done smash that one out now these cuffs you probably can't see it on the uh, the stream because my camera is too far away and it won't focus in but where the cuff meets the the coat there's like a ridge now on some of them that would be white piping it's called um and it can again it can be quite nice because it it creates a border between the cuff and the arm uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check my guide to the poles and I'm going to have a look and see if they had white piping or not. So let's get this done. If not, I'm going to leave it as a slightly darker yellow. Again, just to provide that border between the uh, the light yellow of the facings and the dark blue of the coat. So bang that on there. That around the side. That's pretty much done for the yellow highlights. I give this brush a really good wash out. <laughs> I am only doing three uh, at the moment, Constantine. That is because on the sprue I've got uh, five coats, five backs, but these two here are for elite troops. And I've not done any of these guys as elites. They're all wearing just regular Shakos. So, um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to find another sprue and do two coats on there and then maybe do the rest of them as uh, as the grenadiers. Oh, hang on. No, no, I haven't quite finished with the eye yet. I've got these turnbacks to do. And that should probably do us. Again, I can be a little bit, um, I don't need to worry so much about accuracy here because the colours that are around it, the dark blue and the black, the yellow is not really going to show up against them anyway. So I don't need to worry too much if I go over. A I've got to, oh, by me. Um, I've gone up a little bit on the cartridge box there, so I'm just going to wipe that off. There we go. Get rid of that. Nope. I've waited too long. It's dried on there. Let's get a black. Where are we? There we are. And we'll just get that uh, squared off there. Like so. All right. So that's that done as far as I need to for now. Now I noticed something yesterday I hadn't done. So I'm going to get the black contrast out again. I hadn't done the scabbards for the bayonets. So let's get that done. I don't want too much. And it's this bit down here. Make sure that goes on properly. He's got one. He's got one. I'm going to make sure we do the back as well. So that's that done. Now, the side of the figures I'm a little bit concerned about because I'm not really sure what strap and what's jacket. So I've left them a little bit. But uh, we'll see. Let's see, Jacob. Well, it's time to get out of bed and paint some 40k Crusaders. Still can't sign a fistula, 
or the Swiss. <laughs> uh, they're, they're both super cool. I can't really uh, recommend one over the other, I'm afraid. Um, I think probably the best thing to do would be look what campaigns you're interested in or what periods and see which one was the most active in that period. Uh, I think that's that's one of the things that I look out for. And I'm not necessarily bothered. You know, I'm not going to say like, oh, the Swiss didn't fight in Spain. So I'm not going to use them against the British or whatever. Because, you know, I mean, that's just silly. You use the regiments that you've got or that you want to use. But um, I do try and be more accurate if I can be. But uh, it's certainly not something I let dominate what figures I use or don't use. Right, now I think that's pretty much all the basic details done. I'm going to do the brass next, and then I'm going to cut them out and glue them on. Now, one of the things is, obviously, they're not finished. I haven't done the roll, the greatcoat rolls here. He's got some bread on the back. Uh, there's, like, mess tins and things like that. But I think that's going to be easier to get to once I've actually built the model. So I'm going to get the brass. Here we are. Now, I've got, have I got two brasses? No, I've only got the one, so looks like I'm going to use this one. Now, this one has gone super, super thick, but uh, it's still usable. It's a bit more red than I like. I might add a bit of uh, regular metal to it. So this one is Brass Scorpion. Uh, I tend to use a copper a bit more often because uh, it's just got a little bit of... It's just a little bit brighter. Um, it jumps off of the uh, jumps off of the model a bit more. So let's get this uh, sunburst done. So I've added a little bit of um, lead belcher to the brass scorpion just to uh, just to give it a little bit more of a tinniness to it, make it a bit less yellow and a bit more metallic. So there we go. Now what I'm hoping is that the detail I incised into the green stuff is deep enough that it doesn't get clogged by this paint because this paint is quite thick but uh let's see so the shakos didn't come with these uh sunbursts i uh, i sculpted them on using green stuff uh it was a little bit of a pain in the ass if i'm honest but uh it'll be worth it when it's done i'm sure so that's those Shaco plates done there. I'm going to get these uh, briquettes done while I've got the paint out, even though I'm not going to use them. So that's the uh, the hilt there and the tip at the bottom as well. Uh, now, obviously, the, the largest thing I'm going to use this on is the buttons. Now, with the buttons, say, on the arm here, I'm just going to brush across like that. I'm not going to paint each individual button. I'm just going to use the side of the brush to almost dry brush the uh, the paint on. It's not a dry brush because I haven't taken most of the paint off. But because the buttons are raised, I can use that to my advantage. And it just takes the tip, just takes the, the paint off where it's raised. Hopefully I don't get it on the, uh, the cuffs. So that's a, a bit of a quicker way of painting it there. Oh dear, I think I've got it on the... Uh, Cuffs a bit there, but again, don't worry too much. Uh, people are pr unlikely from two feet away to see that you've got a little bit of brass on the sleeve rather than just on the buttons. I think, uh, I think you're probably going to be all right. So, the side of his covered shako has got some buttons on now. The rest of these, let's see. I'm gonna have to water this down a little bit. I need to be careful, I don't want it to be too watery. We'll run onto the waistcoat now. I know I said that the sleeves don't matter, but this is going to be over white or yellow, so it's going to be a bit of a pain in the ass if uh, if it does run. So hopefully it won't. Uh, there we go. It's going pretty well so far. Should probably be using a finer brush than this, but uh, the problem I find with fine brushes is you don't want to get too much paint on them. Because it'll dry. Uh, you don't want to get too much paint on because it's a very fine brush. So the paint that you do have on there dries very, very quickly. Which can then end up ruining the brush. So it's a little bit of a, um, a sort of... Uh, what's the word? 
uh, cleft stick, a bit of a double-edged sword, really. But you want to use that fine point to get into the smaller areas. But you want to be careful that you don't ruin the brush by just doing the small areas with it. So do that one wash out. I'm not sure what you mean, Sam. What do you mean the wash and the highlights? Let's get some more mixed in there. That's a little bit too metallic, that one. Let's get some more of the, uh, the brass mixed in. As you can see, it's an incredibly scientific and mathematical procedure. It's like a blob mixing with a blob. I'm not measuring it out particularly sorry Right, so I think that's going to do us for the brass there. Did I do the back of those uh, swords? I didn't. Right, now we can see we've got these large areas here that are just white. Now this is where these are going to plug into. Now I'm not 100% sure how much they're going to cover, how much they're not going to cover. So... I'll be quite interested to see how this goes. I've not built any of these figures at all. Uh, so this is the first time for me as well. So let's get them off the sprue. Now, I know some of you have been... Oh, no, I'll tell you what I haven't done. I haven't done the chin scales, have I? Let's quickly do those because the muskets are going to get in the way of doing those. So... The hair off the brush. Let's get that done down there. It's not brassy enough. Sorry, and I'm not uh, not providing great entertainment at the moment, but uh, I'm just concentrating. So he doesn't have chin scales. The guys in the covered shakos. So that's something to note. Hanging up the side there. He's gone upside. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Cool. Uh, now they could probably do with a wash. I might wash them later just to bring them out. I might not. We'll uh, we'll see how that goes. But let's get them off the sprue. Now this is something I know a lot of you have been wondering about. So I'm going to get my clippers. Uh, now the sharper your clippers, the better. As you can see, the end of these is actually bent out a little bit. So they're, they're probably past their prime. Had all the shops been open, I would have got myself a new set of clippers. But as it stands, I'll have to do uh, with what we've got. So, get the flat edge against the model. Push in and squeeze. Now, I'm sure you guys all know how to use clippers. Uh, I'm going to do one with a covered shaker as well. So, we'll do that one. And then other side. And then off the face. Pop him out there. Pop him out there. And then pop this chap out 
there, like so. So that's the figures out. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem because the connections are on the arms and on the base there. So we're going to need to clean those up now. So you can see there's quite a bit of a uh, a bit of flash there. So we'll get rid of that. Now I'm not going to push against the head because the head might pop off if I do that because it is glued on. It doesn't come molded onto the model originally. So that's got rid of that. Now doing this also helps to get rid of some of the paint that's on the arms here as well. You can scrape, scrape it off with your knife if you want to. Um, and this is going to help if you use plastic glue to glue the arms on. Now I'm probably going to use super glue anyway. But if you'd rather use plastic glue, then you need to scrape the paint off because the way it works is it melts the plastic to itself. Uh, if you have paint in the way, and it obviously can't melt the plastic, and that means that it's just it's just not going to glue. You'll just fall off again. So get rid of that one there. If you ever end up with dry paint on your brush, Winsor Newton brush cleaner is ace. All right, cheers for that table salt, Sergeant. I've heard about um, about the brush, the soap. I haven't used it myself, but uh, I probably should. One of the things that puts me off getting really high quality, expensive paint brushes is uh, is the way my brushes go. Uh, it's probably due to me not cleaning them properly, but uh, I don't want a 15 quid brush that's just going to last, you know, a month, two months, three, maybe, maybe six months. Um, I just, I don't think it's worth the money really. But uh, I, as I keep saying, my brother's more of a painter than me and he, uh, his brushes last forever because he looks after them. So he's a chef, so he's used to looking after his, uh, his equipment, his is work equipment so there we go that's off the bottom there let's get it off the arms as well no matter how close to the uh, sprue you uh, you manage to cut you're always going to end up with a little bit of plastic left over so uh, you're going to have to do this regardless and it's no more effort to cut off a giant chunk of plastic than it is a small one so don't worry too much so there we go that's them done lovely now that was the easy part of it because the connections were at bits that we don't really care about because they're not going to be seen on the final figure. This is a little bit more complicated because we've got the edges of the packs there on here. So push it in now, push it in past the tip, get it a bit further in. It doesn't help that my uh, the tip of my clippers is not, not together, so that's not great. So you see I'm holding it as I'm cutting as well. That's to stop it flying off everywhere. And also to take up some of the, the shock of when you, uh, when you cut it. Because sometimes I can shake the paint off. That sounds silly, but uh, particularly on a soft plastic, that can be an absolute nightmare. So that's those three packs done. I'm going to have to clean those up in a second. But I'm also going to do the muskets now as well. That's that arm there. Now with these ones, you want to try and get as close to the arm as possible because you want there to be as little cleanup as you need. The more you mess about with them, the more chance there is of paint flaking off and that's really not what we're after. So that hasn't cut properly because of the clippers. As you see, there's a giant chunk just there. That's going to need to come off. That's going to be a bit annoying. Uh, so we can get to this one a bit easier though. Sorry, just now it's probably not on camera. And then this one here. Now this one here, I've already noticed there's quite a, there's a little bit on the back there that I haven't painted with a contrast. So again, I'm going to zap that when I uh, do the touching up. So there we go. That's all the arms off and all the packs. So those figures will, that's everything we need to complete those. Now I'm going to use my extra sharp knife on these. I don't want to apply too much pressure because again, the more pressure you apply, the more chance there is of paint flaking off. So by using an extra sharp knife, you need less pressure and there's less chance of paint flaking off. So on here, I'm just going to do that. You'll notice I'm cutting away from myself because this is a super sharp one. I don't want to, uh, cut towards my thumb if I can avoid it. So that's that side and that's this side. Now, as you can see, if I get that out of the way, uh, you've got these gray 
this gray patch here now from where it was attached to the sprue. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back with a little bit of Mornfang Brown. And I'm just going to touch that up in a second. So I've done that one there. I don't think I did the musket arm, did I? Let's have a look. No, I didn't. So pop it down there and then just chop like that. A little bit more. There we go. So we'll chop down here. Again, just be careful that I had a huge chunk off it. Now it's important not to put pressure in a place that's going to bend the musket or snap the bayonet. So I'm pushing down with my left hand to keep it upright, and then I'm just chopping down with the extra sharp knife just to uh, just to make sure that it shives that off. So do a bit there as well. There we go. Same on the backpack. Again, because I'm using a very sharp knife, cutting away from myself. That one there. And then finally, I think that was the, the most difficult one from where I got it off the sprue. Now this one here, I've got a bit of a flap there. So I'm going to have to cut that off. And it's probably going to leave quite a bit that's going to need touching up. So that's a shame. So you see there, there's now that big triangle there, and there's this bit on the elbow that I missed in the original, the original paint anyway. So it's not too bad. This one here, let's get rid of that. Now you'll notice when I did the brass, I didn't do the uh, the shoulders. Uh, they've got like a little brass triangle on there. Uh, there was no point because that's where it was attached to the uh, to the sprue. So I would only ended up most of it flaking off anyway. So that's that done. It's ready to cool. Let's get out of the way. Now, because I've painted on the sprue, I can't use plastic glue. So I'm going to use super glue. I really like the Army Painter super glue because it normally doesn't clog up. And now I've said this, it's going to, it's going to be, isn't it? Um, so let's see how we get on. Now I'm going to start at the back. There we go. And let's pop this on now like i say this is the first time i've ever built one of these so i'm not 100 percent sure how the uh, the straps are going to match up i might need to go back in and do a bit more blue i might need to try and separate some of the straps out i'm not quite sure yet so we'll get that one on there now if you've got any pegs you can peg them uh, peg them together while they dry uh, i did have some and then i obviously didn't keep them in my pocket so i don't know what i've done with those Let's get these on. Again, pop that in there. Now he's going to need a bit more blue doing on him. I don't know, maybe he's not. I don't know. We'll see. That's been popped onto there. And then this one on here. I'm lining them down because I don't want the, uh, the packs to fall off. Now, unfortunately, I'm having to rest them on the pack anyway. So there's a bit of pressure on them. Uh, that's where having some pegs would have been quite handy, but uh, never mind. So pop him on there and come back to the first one. Now, I don't want to use too much super glue here. You could put like a splurge on somewhere and then apply it with a, uh, a cocktail stick or a coffee stir or something like that if you were a bit concerned about getting too much on. But uh, let's see. I'll tell you what I'll do is other arm fill. See, this is the problem. So I'm going to do this arm first. That's gone on there quite nicely. Now, because he's right legs forward, his left arm needs to be back a little bit. If you think when you walk or when you see soldiers marching, they go opposite arms and legs. So it's... Uh, you want you guys to look realistic. So let's try and get them their arms and legs in the right position. Because I've turned his head, his shako is stopping his arm going on. 
fully. So let's have a little bit of glue on the shaker as well. And have that back there. Now I need to just check that his arm's not too high. It is a little bit, so I'll just move it down. There we go. Move it back a little bit. Now this is where plastic glue works very, very well because it takes quite a while to dry. You can uh, still move stuff around while it's drying. And to be honest, the moving it around really helps um, glue it together anyway because you're you're really mashing the plastic together. Now what I've, I've made a mistake here, this is a lesson to be learned for the future. Glue the arms on, then glue the back on. So if you're doing these peri figures, we have learned today, arms first and then the back afterwards. So there we go. He is Dunsies. So he can go there. And the next one, his pack's on reasonably secure. So hopefully it won't come off while I'm trying to do the arms. So let's do the non-musket arm first. Now the reason I'm doing the non-musket arm first is because it's less likely to get in the way. The musket's quite a big piece, so it just means more likely to get in the way. Again, I've got his arms swinging back because his legs forward, and then I shall do the other side. One of the things it lets you do with these multi-part figures is it does let you make them a little bit more natural because you can have the arms swinging. Uh, now, the arm with the musket's not going to swing as much as the arm without it, so we'll go there that's lovely and then this one here so non-arm oh blimey i've missed a load on there haven't i oh well never mind uh non-arm goes on to there now one of the big things i'm gonna have to do here is oh see what i've done there I wasn't thinking, I've done the arm back and his legs back as well. He's the opposite way to the other guy. So this arm needs to be forward, like so. I think that looks a lot better. And then this musket arm needs to be back a little bit. Now it's going to be a bit more difficult because he's got this um, good and I've also used the canteen back on him. So maybe I shouldn't have used that back on him, but never mind, too late now. So that's him there. Now I'm going to leave him to dry a little bit. I think he's going to need a bit of time to dry. But this is the first one that we did. So I'm pretty pleased with him. I think he looks quite nice. I still need to finish the um, like the wicker basket he's got there. His bread needs painting. And I need to go and touch up these bits here. Now normally I would leave it a long time for the super glue to dry. Because if I get super glue on the paintbrush, then I'm going to knacker up my paintbrush. So normally I would leave it, but for the sake of today, I'm going to find a paintbrush of mine that is very, very much on the way out. So hang on. Let me see. Uh, let me see. What about you? How are you doing? Yeah, this one will do. So that one doesn't look like a great brush. It's one of the Citadel starter brushes. So it's actually um, uh, acrylic anyway. It's not uh, not sable hair. I'm going to go back in with the blue and I'm going to get touch up the bits that we cut it off the sprue and also the bits on the back. So let's have a look. So this is where we cut this arm off the sprue. That was a bit that I missed. I've also got a bit of the back here, which I didn't do because I wasn't sure what was strap and what was coat. So get some blue on there. Let's start at the back. Work our way forward. There we go. Now. I can also put it on a little bit thicker there and that will help join the arm to the body. That's not going to be the strongest uh, link that you've ever made. That's what the super glue is there for. But it certainly isn't going to help. And it also helps tie it in that, to stop it looking like you've painted the arms and the body separately, then glued them together. I, uh, I saw an army once uh, and it was it was a French guy. And he'd had a 
professional commission painted fantasy army of Bretonians they were actually and they looked absolutely phenomenal the guy who painted them was absolutely brilliant they were lovely but he clearly painted them separately and then glued them all together and you could tell and it just just took away from the army really there's this huge white patch here now I don't think that's supposed to be white I think that's supposed to be blue so let's get that up there now that's a strap there that goes to his cartridge box that's fine but that's him done there I'm just looking for any more parts that I've missed on the blue some of the blue's gone over onto his pack that's fine because I want to go over that in a second anyway I missed the back of his leg let's get that done so this guy I think he is pretty much done he's going to need still a little bit of work doing to him he's going to need his great coat painting his loaf of bread and his um a uh, couple more bits he's going to need his pack touching up as well but as far as the main colors that go I think he's pretty much done so this guy let's see yeah between his arm and his body there we go now I know which parts are strap and which parts aren't I should be able to avoid doing this in future. I've rubbed up some super glue on the old brush there. And again down here, I can see there's there's two straps there, so I can get those separated out. Now one of these is gonna be, um, he's also gonna have to have some more yellow painted down from the facings as well. This guy, I've missed quite a lot on him. So between the straps there and this strap here, there's quite a bit. And that arm that goes up there. But that's fine, because as I say, we're going over and touching them up now anyway. It's the, uh, the finished product that's important, not how they look before they're finished. So there we go. Now, uh, what time is it? It's five to one. So I think we've probably still got a little bit more time. I know I said I wanted to get them uh, off the sprue by the end of the, uh, the session. But I'll go for another 10 minutes. And uh, we'll see. I'm basically trying to get the, uh, the packs done now. I want to get these figures finished today if I can. So I'm just going for Morn Fang Brown. I'm just going to pop that over here. You do lose the effect of the contrast. You're not going to get the... Uh, um, you're not really going to get the texture come out. But, you know, I mean, it's on such a small part anyway that uh, I don't think anyone's really going to notice. It's on the side of the figure, which, no one, again, no one really looks at. Uh, I make no uh, no claims that these are going to win the crystal brush. The, the point is really, let's just get them on the tabletop. Let's cover any bits of bare plastic that look a bit silly and uh you know you could go over and wash this if you wanted to um i'm not going to but uh if you were concerned then you could do there we go so i'll we'll have a little bit of brass on the top of the the shoulders There we go. Top of that shoulder as well. Checking his buttons there, they're all done. Very cool. This guy here. He could probably do with a bit more blue actually on his shoulder. Now I look at it. So I might go back and do that in a second. Put him there. This guy there. And then put that one there. Right, so I think that's that's enough from that brush for now, I think. Actually, no, I was gonna go and do the blue, wasn't I? So that could be this brush's last uh, last act of the day. Again, there's a risk of there being wet uh, wet super glue in here. So that's why I'm using this one. There we go. So 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put photos of these. I'm going to lay them out here. Um, I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see them. So what I'll do is I'll get some pictures and pop them up on the Facebook page later. Uh, and then we can uh, we can see. I'm going to hold them up, hopefully. Where are we? Hopefully the camera's going to be able to focus on him. It might not be able to, though. I'm hoping it will. Uh, no, it's not really. So that's a shame. But uh, I'll get some proper pictures up on the Facebook page later. So make sure you, uh, you're you on the Facebook page and you'll see them. So I'm going to pop them back here for now. And uh, now one thing that we definitely haven't done is their pom-poms. Now, the French had different pom-poms on their Shakos depending on which company they were in in the regiment. So um, I'm going to do them as, let me see what paints have i got up here um i'm doing them as a third company they had an orange was the color of their pom-poms so let's get some red now i don't have an orange up here with me uh i'm gonna get a bright yellow i'm gonna bring back our uh our last brush so see that's the problem with these brushes right i don't know what went on there guys sorry about that um, I think my internet might have dropped off. Um, no. I'm hoping my computer just turned itself off. So I'm hoping that uh, I'm still streaming in. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm still streaming in landscape because I can't check on my laptop at the moment. Hang on, what's going on here? Uh, I don't like the fact that it uh, ended with a nice close-up of my forearm as well. It's, uh, it's rather grim. Right, so yeah, no, that's cool. We're back. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so let's quickly bash these out. I think I might have to end it shortly, I'm afraid. What time are we on now? Two minutes past. Now, my internet... I think is dropping off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these great coats done on stream. I'm going to get them washed black and then we're going to end it there. So that's that great coat done. We'll do this one as well. There's a little bit of a ridge there from where I cut it off the sprue, so let's get rid of that. I'm going to use my super sharp knife again, and we'll go back in. Ah, oh, cool, we're in landscape still. That's lovely. Thank you, Lewis. Um, I'm super paranoid about being in portrait because uh, I uh, I have this thing about people filming in portrait. So, uh, and, I, and I did it for the whole stream yesterday, so I can't uh, can't criticize anyone for it anymore. Uh, dun, 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 dun. We're coming up to the two hour mark here. Thank you very much to anyone who's uh, who's watched, and particularly if you've been here for two hours. Uh, I hope you guys have got some uh, some painting done as well. Now I'm um, I'm going to wait a moment for these to dry before I put the wash on. I can see that this strap here, that's still a little bit grey. So I'm going to go over it again with the white. As you can see, my white isn't a huge amount better than my uh, my Corax white. But uh, we'll get there. So there we go. Lovely. Uh, so I'm just going to do these bits that are hanging off them then while we're waiting. Now one of them is a wicker. So I'm going to use the bone for that one. So his bottle there I'm going to do with the wicker. This is a good, so I can use the bone for that as well. And he's got a water canteen there and a gourd there. So I'm going to do the canteen metal. These are just a little bit extras that really bring the soldiers to life. They're a bit of a pain in the arse uh, to paint because it's like, well, oh, I've got more random bits to paint. 
But uh, it is worth doing once you've got them on the model. They do look quite nice. The Warlord uh, late French infantry in the greatcoats. Uh, one of those guys has a string of onions hanging off his pack, which I particularly like. Uh, Uh, yes, Steve, the Facebook page is the same name. It's the same um, logo as well. It's uh, General LaSalle. Uh, he is my absolute favourite. So, uh, yeah, no, it's it's the same name. And just keep an eye out for him as well. And uh, as was the case in history, LaSalle will always lead you the right way. That's that's a complete lie. He'd normally lead you into death and disaster. But uh that's that dash in the land that we like about the uh, about the period, or is for me anyway. So that's his wicker done there. This is his good. Now you can paint these as uh, bottles, because also like those round sort of bo bottomed bottles as well. But because I've got the bone out, I'm going to do them as a good. Because I am lazy. So there we go. Now, I am definitely going to put this brush away, and I'm going to go back to Old Faithful. So, we've got these ones here. Now the packs are on, they might actually uh, lie straight, he said. He's got a loaf of bread on his back, so he won't. So, let's get that loaf of bread done. So, I'm going to have a lighter brown than that one. Uh, when you're doing, when you're mixing colours, uh, uh, particularly if you're wanting to make a colour lighter... I would recommend against using white because that just makes it sort of washed out. So try and use a cream if you can or a bone. This is going to look like no loaf of bread ever, but uh, it'll do. So the key is I want to make it a different brown from the uh, the pack. Otherwise, it's just going to just going to blend in. Now you probably can't see on the camera. But it is very slightly lighter. And then a bit of bone at the end, which is where the, uh, the crust's been taken off. So there we go. <laughs> the sal did look very cool looking look leading you to your death. You was no better uh, no better looking uh, death to be had out there, I don't think. So, uh, null oil. Let's get some black wash on this great coat. Now, it does dull it down a lot, this null oil. So, just be aware of that. It's probably a little duller than I would necessarily like. But uh, you can always go back and re-highlight it if you want to, if you're that bothered. Uh, I'm, I'm not, to be perfectly honest. But uh, if you wanted it to be a little bit lighter than that, and I can understand why I certainly wouldn't uh, wouldn't criticise anyone for that. Uh, let's get that done there. It's done on this side. So again, I mean, I'm being fairly uh, fairly liberal with the black wash. I'm not worried too much about it. It really nicely brings out those uh, those straps. So let's get it done on here. Then. Those done down there as well. Now I've noticed the top of the packs is looking a bit white. Now you can't really see unless you get the figures up close and personal. But uh, I might bang a quick brown wash in there later when uh, when I'm off camera. So that's it so far. I'm going to do the white straps here. And then I think we can call it a day for today. As I say, keep an eye out on the... Facebook page and I'll get some pictures of them done up uh, da, 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 da. Oh, that wash is still a bit wet so I'll leave that to dry I'll tell you what I can do actually while I'm waiting is I'm going to pop these over here and I'm going to have a very quick check in my book to check the piping of the infantry was it white or was it yellow again looking at these images here so this book is orphan eagles this is from as i said yesterday you can get this one from warlord games um 
the Vistula Legion's got its own chapter. Uh, there's far more on the army of the Duchy of Warsaw than there is on the Vistula Legion. But, you know, okay, I mean, that's fair enough. That's a whole army as opposed to just four regiments. And as we can see here, the uh, it doesn't look like they've got any piping. Now, this is a different coat to the ones that we've got. But I think we can safely say that they don't have piping on there. So I think we're safe by not painting the piping. That's good because it's very fiddly and takes forever. So that's cool. Now, what I'm also going to do off camera, so you're not going to see this, is I'm going to glue them to a base. And... Uh, I glue them to a base? No, no, I won't do it. I'll, I'll do that on camera as well. And I'll show you how I base my figures. I use like a yellow grass. Uh, which a lot of people don't like, and that's fair enough. But uh, what it did mean is when we went to the Waterloo, the giant Waterloo game in Glasgow, it meant that I can look at any photograph from anywhere in the hall, and if my figures are in it, I can instantly recognise them because of the bright yellow grass that they're walking along. So... Let's get this done. I saw earlier on, sorry, I didn't reply to it, that you were painting 15 mil Plains Indians uh, to the Peter Pig rules. Uh, I've seen those rules. I haven't played them yet. I've got them, um, but never got around to getting armies for them. But they look very interesting. I know Peter Pig, they do uh, do some quite out there rules. Square bashing I've played, and that was uh, very different to what I'm used to. Uh, not worse, just, uh, just very different. So I used to play... Um, Pony Wars and the Men of Troop B. I used to play uh, as a kid with using 20 mil airfix figures. Uh, they were some quite cool rules. In fact, I hear that Pony Wars is coming back actually, a new edition, but uh, I don't know how true that is. But I don't need to be, uh, I don't need to get into a, like yet another period there. So there we go. That is those straps done. I'm going to call it a day there, chaps. I think that we should be pretty happy with those. I'm sorry that the camera can't focus in on them. I am only using my phone, but uh, I'm going to try and um, next time maybe get the camera a bit closer. And I've been suggested to use a white background as well to help the camera focus. Uh, but thank you very much for watching today. I'm going to knock it on the head there. As I say, please check out the Facebook page. I'm going to pop some photos on there. I'm going to do I'm going to do the photos now. And I hope to see you all next time. I'm not sure I'm going to be streaming tomorrow. I'll put out a notification on the Facebook page when I am. I might actually be playing a game tomorrow instead. But uh, we'll see how it goes. But I hope you guys all enjoy your Easter Saturday. And uh, thank you very much for watching, especially if you watch the whole way through, you crazy, crazy people. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.